Hello everyone, this is Robert Gephardt. Today I want to address a question that was asked to me on uh, as a comment on one of my videos and it was asked by Norm Norm and the question is can I be anonymous as a freelancer? I'm gonna assume that this means can you be anonymous, can you go by without using your real name and can you get by and get clients and uh, have a successful career not having to put your real name out there online. Now, I feel if when you're working online, transparency and honesty are very important because you're dealing with someone who you've never met, probably will never meet, probably will never be in contact with, okay? If you meet someone face-to-face -face and you're hiring them for a job, even if it's for a short one-time job, you can meet them face-to-face, -face, get a feel for them, kind of feel like you know them, you can ask them where they live, talk a bit about what you guys know in common, et cetera, et cetera. You get their phone number, whatever contact details you want, and you're fine. If you meet someone online, though, you don't have any of that. You're meeting someone from the other side of the globe, you don't know if they're gonna disappear on you, if they're gonna do a good job or a bad job, or maybe just send you a bad job and then disappear or send you a virus or, you know, whatever. Now, uh, obviously, vast majority of the people aren't like that, but you need to put yourself in the shoes of people who are hiring. When they hire someone online, they really don't know what they're gonna get. So you use websites that you can sort of trust, like Upwork and Pros and these other websites because they have an escrow service or they have a history of, uh, of what you've done online. They have your ratings and referrals and recommendations and stuff like that. And all of these can help. When you are working online, every little bit of transparency and honesty that you can show there. So all the information you can show of yourself will help your cause, basically help you in looking more honest and transparent and trustworthy for the client to hire you. Having said that, I can also understand that maybe you don't want to put all your information online. Say, hey, this is every single, you know, little last piece of information about me. Have fun. Because unfortunately, you do find people out there online who can do stupid things. So how do you go about it? How do you find this happy medium and, uh, and what can you do? And namely, would it be possible not to use your real name? Can you get by just using a nickname or an alias or something along those lines. Well, first of all, there are two things. If you don't want to use your real name, you have two options. One is to use an alias or a nickname. So that's something that's not your real name and it's quite obvious that it's, uh, that it's a nickname of sorts. And the second option would be to use a fake name. So you just invent some other name and say that's yours. Out of these two options, I definitely prefer the nickname and the alias because while it's not your real name, at least it's obvious. So there's a certain transparency in that. If I use, say, Rob G or RG or something like that, then people know, they can guess that's not my real name, so I'm being upfront about not using my real name. I would not use a fake name. The only reason I wouldn't, now you could argue, say, oh, but if I use a different name, if I say William Johnson and I just use that name, then it should be okay. In theory, it should be, but there are several issues. First of all, you're gonna upload either past projects you've worked on or a CV or you know schools you've been to, stuff like that. And if they do decide to look at your background and or to search for you or do anything along those lines, which they might do for bigger projects, long-term projects, stuff like that, then they're not gonna find you or they're gonna find that you're lying about your name, in which case you're gonna automatically be crossed out because once again, transparency and honesty are big online and so they won't wanna mess with you. However, if you use a nickname, then they know it's a nickname. And so when they're researching you, they can either ask you if you can provide your real name or what else you could provide so that they can feel more at ease. And usually there it's enough to provide, you know, if you provide a phone number, that's great. Cause you're like, look, I, I don't like to put all my information online, but here's my phone number. If you give me a call, I'll be happy to talk to you. And, uh, and that way, at least they have personal contact with you and they can talk to you. Skype also is great because that's like a phone call, but they get to see you face to face and they get more of a feel for you. So if you can provide a Skype ID, a phone number, you know, but at minimum, uh, an email address that obviously that you read and then you can reply to pretty quickly, then those can also help. Uh, the more of these you can provide, the better. Obviously along with these, you want ratings and referrals, but when you're first starting out, which I assume is what he's talking about, then you won't have those. So you need to provide something else. A resume of sorts is also good. You can just, it's very easy to take your name off and just put a nickname or something along those lines there. Remember that your name might be in your email address. So you'll probably be using another email address, which means it'll probably be Gmail, Hotmail, you know, one of those kind of anonymous ones. If that's the case, then the email doesn't help all that much. If it's an old school email, it helps more. So um, if you have something at yourschool.edu, even if it doesn't have your name, it helps because it's not 
one that you set up anonymously. There's obviously a real one that you earned, so to speak. So just keep those in mind when you're dealing with people. Uh, what I'm gonna do now actually is go through some of, uh, so I'm gonna put on my client hat and be basically be someone who hires freelance translators and go through a couple profiles just so you can get a feeling of what other people are doing and what it looks like for the client if you use a nickname or other different information. And hopefully that'll give you a good idea as to how to proceed. Okay, so this is uh, pros.com. Uh, once again, this is the main translation website. And I wanna go through some of the jobs that I've posted here in the past. I think it's, uh, here my posted jobs. And show you some of the people who applied. So you can see from my point of view as someone who's posting jobs, someone who's uh, trying to look for a freelancer, you can get a good idea. Here is a recent one that I've posted. And you can get a good idea um, as to what I see when you post. So here are the names of some of the people who posted. Uh, here, let's show them all. Actually, we can just start here. Um, if you look, this person used his real name, real name, real name, real name, real name, real name. Uh, actually, this is something I didn't mention be before, but a photo is a huge help as well. Even if you don't want to use a real name, if you can provide a photo, it usually helps quite a bit. So this person used a real name, but no photo. So when I click on here, I don't actually I also don't see any ratings or referrals which is a pretty bad sign and for me quite frankly I don't think I would hire this person just based off this I see one question and uh, answered under kudos but that's because I know my way around pros I know what this means most people won't know that and so they see this and they're not sure what to do one other thing they can do is search for a, um, a CV but uh, there is no CV. Of course, there's a portfolio here, as you can see. Bachelor's degree UFF. I don't know what that is off, uh, but here, University of Westmin Westminster. So actually here, this is also good because it's a, it is ties to the real world, right? I could, if I wanted to, contact the University of Westminster and ask if, the, if a Shirley Damaso has actually been there or not. If it's for a long-term project, then uh, and I'm actually gonna go and contact some of the uh, people they've worked with in the past and that's something that I could actually look into. Here if we keep going down we see this person has what is obviously an alias or a nickname and so let's look into it but she has a photo so that helps. On the other hand there's no feedback here and uh, so once again also doesn't provide any information here. Uh, no credentials, no member. I mean, she might not be a member, but nothing in the about me. To me, this is a no-no. Um, you know, even if it's a small job, I do want someone that I can trust. And uh, quite frankly, this looks like someone who maybe just signed up and thought, hey, you know, I'll, I'll see if I can make some extra cash on this. And, but hasn't been very serious about trying to build their portfolio about pros.com. So I am afraid that if I hire her, she will end up um, deciding, oh, this isn't for me, and then let's say the quality might not be so high or she might not give it her all, and then that's it. Look, this is what I get from the limited information I get online on these profiles. And so just keep this in mind when you're looking. I wanna look at something else here, Chinese to English, because not being someone who's from China, a lot of times Chinese names can seem different. If you look at some of these names, Alec Battles is probably a real name. This is obviously a nickname. This Doris Lang is probably her English name, right? Or Western name, let's say. Here too, Yorktian is probably the same deal. Lily is also Catherine Schwen and Aaron Chia. So all of these seem to be using Western names because they're easier for someone like me to pronounce. That doesn't bother me at all. So this would probably go under the thing of nicknames. Of course, when I do look someone like this up, I will I'll understand if uh, if I search for their work records or their school records, that the name might not be Catherine, but it might be some other name, you know, some Chinese name. Now she doesn't offer this here, just says Catherine Xuan, um, and I don't see much more information. So, oh, but there is a phone number. So this is great. There's a YouTube page, which I'm not gonna click on now, but uh, that could be good or not. Um, so, but let's go back to this list because I wanna, I wanna also look at the person with the nickname. Okay, why is it doing this? Okay, here we go. Okay, because this one is obviously a nickname. So when I look through all of these, I see this nickname. I have to say it doesn't bother me all that much. What I'm going to do is when I look at each of their profiles is I'm gonna check here, positive entries, this shows that even though she doesn't use her real name, 
she has, well, first of all, she has a picture. And this always gives a good feeling to someone who's hiring because suddenly they get a visual of who they're dealing with. But when you see 25 positive entries, that's always a good sign. And, um, and here you can see what people have entered. And not only that, but I can go here and see that, okay, she's been on this site since 2013 and she has 25 positive entries. This is obviously something she's taken seriously. And she, so she'll probably be quite good at this. Um, she's filled out all her information here. She has all these points. Now, someone who's just new to the pros.com website, like a new client probably won't know all this, but she has all this information and as well as a PDF of her resume, which is important too. And this is once again for more longer term projects, at least here I know I can call her and, uh, and actually here she does provide a real name, um, her Chinese name. So I would say her using a nickname was not a problem at all in this case because I felt like I'm dealing with someone real who's not hiding anything and just happens to use their online nick nickname for this. So if that's your issue, you don't want to use your real name, you know, an online nickname will be fine, but try to provide as much other information as you can. Let's go quickly here because this person obviously doesn't have a picture of herself, just has that. This is still better than having nothing at all. But 71 positive entries is awesome. And so, you know, once you're at the point with so many positive entries, yeah, you kind of get a pass for the rest. But when you're first starting out, then yeah, you need to show as much information as you can. So in conclusion, I feel that you should provide as much information as you can just to make the client feel more at ease. If you don't want to use your real name, that's fine. Use a nickname. They'll know it's a nickname that should be fine, but provide as much other information as you can. Ways to get in touch with you. Things that show your past experience that uh, they feel they can follow up on. Even if they don't, chances are no one's gonna call the university that you went to or past people you worked for, unless it's like a full-time or long-term job, but at least they feel they can, and that can do a lot for a person. I would not lie, I would not give a fake name because if you do get found out about those, first of all, they'll cut you off. Second of all, you never know if they'll report you to a website or stuff like that. So yeah, that's about it. I hope that helps in terms of what you can provide. It always will be a balancing act. You don't want to provide everything online about yourself, but you should provide enough to make the client feel like you won't disappear and that you're a, an honest person. So yeah, I hope that helps you, Norm Norm. And uh, obviously Norm Norm is a nickname as well. And uh, I hope that helps you. And I hope that helps all of you there who are maybe wondering how much information to provide on these websites. If you have any other questions like that, feel free to let me know. Uh, you can let me know in the comments below. And uh, I try to read all of them and get to all of them. Feel free to subscribe if you want more videos about freelancing and freelance translation. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video because that always helps and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks. Bye.